Hey there. So you have finished painting the top of your sled and it looks amazing, right? Okay, so let's talk about how to go about assembling and finishing it off. I have two pieces here and maybe at the end, if you struggled with getting the words in or wanted to skip it, we can maybe look at how to do that. Here's another one I did, it didn't quite finish it. So I'll set those guys aside just for now. Over here. Okay, and so you are gonna have your sled rails, right? And so you'll see there's kind of a dark side that looks a little bit burnt. Probably smells a little burnt too, because these are laser cut. And then you have your lighter side. Same as with the forward kick foot piece. So let's go ahead and just get these things painted. I'm gonna begin by painting the dark side. And then we'll come back and do the light side. The reason I'm doing that is that the dark side is the inside and it's gonna be less visible. And so we'll paint it first, let it mostly dry and then flip over to get the other side. This, this side doesn't matter as much. So we always start with it first. So you can get, you know, kind of inside if you like, kind of around the edges, whatever works for you. And just use a big fluffy brush and make sure that you're protecting your workspace. I'm using silver. If you have a different color in mind, you know, from the colors that maybe came in your kit, or if you're just, you know, have colors on hand, do what makes you happy. Someone I know actually suggested, hey, let's candy stripe those things and created like little red and white uh, stripes on them. I thought that was a great idea. Um, however, I also feel like that might be just a little bit much for my sled. So the other thing is you want to make sure that when these pieces are placed like this, they kind of face each other. Although, honestly, once they're painted, it won't matter. So again, just a quick coating. I'm using silver because I'm putting this on the gray sled and I think that'll look, I think that'll look pretty cool. You could use black, you could use red. Again, the sky's the limit. You're gonna choose a color that makes you happy, that you like the best. All right, moving that along. And then I have here um, the backside, front side. In fact, you don't even have to paint the backside of this one because it it's not really gonna show. So I'm gonna flip this over to the not burned side again. Slightly burned side, not burned side. This piece will show. So you can make it silver, gray, red, maybe blue, black, kind of whatever, whatever, whatever makes you happy. I know I said that, I'm gonna say it again. In fact, this one, because I'm putting it with a snowman, might make more sense to be gray, but I've got the silver with me, so I'm gonna go with that. And it kind of looks, kind of looks gray, doesn't it? This just has a smidge more sheen on it than than your average gray. So you're gonna have to give that a minute to dry. And I'm gonna break out my heat gun, get it dried quickly. So we can flip them over and do the other side, except for this one, obviously. Okay, and another thing we can do, especially if you're waiting for all this stuff to dry before you flip it over, if you wanna add some snowflakes to the kick plate there or the, I think it's a steering plate. I'm sure there's an official name for it. You can do that. So maybe grab a little bit of your white paint, squeeze it onto your palette, just a little, you don't need much. And then the, again, same as we did on the, on the snow for these guys before, you're gonna grab maybe the, the tail of your, of your brush, dip it in and just kind of dot. So as you think about snow, remember that these pieces should not be perfectly even. A little bit of randomness is good. So if you even kind of do it thinking as like you've got kind of snow falling down, especially if you have a vertical design. And when I say vertical design, I really mean like you've got this guy. Okay, that's upside down for you but the snow will be going this way. I will bring him back in a minute. Show y'all how to assemble this. All right, so I probably went to, went to town a little bit on the snow. Again, if it starts to look too patterny, just, you know, clump a few together. 
have a couple bits going right off the edge. It helps give that random feel. All right, I'm going to call that good. So, whoop, where my towels go? Make sure you wipe that paint off the tip of your brush or the tail of your brush. Lift that up so you can kind of see it. Ta-da! Very simple. And again, if you're not liking that, that's fine. I am not offended if it's not your, your staff. And this is fairly dry, so we'll go ahead and flip it over. Yeah, it's stick. Oh, it's just the bottom part that's sticking. Yeah, hold on. It's a little wet. I'm going to give it one more blast. There we go. Oh, just a little bit more there. You can use your hair dryer or a specialty heat gun if you have one. Or you can just pause, get up, go do a thing, come back. but you don't want to wait for me to go get a drink or, you know, do a thing. So I got to hustle it along while on camera for you. Okay. So now I'm just getting the other side silvered up. Sometimes getting paint on these is enough to kind of keep the, the sleds together. And then sometimes you have to glue it if you want it. Now, if you don't want to glue it, that's also okay. What that means is that these are really easy to disassemble. And, and pack a little bit flatter um, when they're not out during non-holiday times. And so that might actually be kind of a good way to go simply because it, it's less likely to, to break. And I'm not saying that these things are super fragile, but um, you know, if you're, if you're tight on space or just wanting to be able to put something away really simply and not worry about the extra couple inches and you know any having to put pressure on it then being able to disassemble it is going to be a huge benefit so i will leave that up to you but i will definitely show you where the glue points are so that you know where to do it all right so i believe i am pretty much done with my brush oh you know what? i'm going to get the so for this guy we'll flip it all this part right here is not going to be seen. So you can, you don't have to get it. Although these little square squares at the tops of the columns will be seen, right? Because they'll be showing in your sled. So you can get them. And maybe kind of the, the edges here, like around the curly bit. And er, here in the tail. That might show a little bit. Not too much. Okay, look at that guy. Oops, squeeze just a smidge more silver on. Yeah, so just checking just a couple like, you know, pretties up. So it's a lot easier to paint these separate than to do it while it's all assembled. I think you'd just absolutely be miserable trying to do all this, paint the whole thing assembled okay so you see there it's all nicely silvered up so is this guy see we just painted that side okay so the side that you just painted I'm gonna flop that down and give it a quick blast just placing this thing okay and so if you have like super glue or something like that, um, or a super glue with a specialty activator, um, what you would do is you'd want just like a gel, like a crazy glue gel. You don't want the super liquidy stuff. You need something with a little bit of thickness. Let's see if I can, those little white snow dots dry. Otherwise I'm gonna have smudged stuff everywhere. I'm going to use this guy. This one I did in a paint party and I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off. So it's not my best job painting because I was also painting the other sled and everything, but no big deal. So these guys just swapped. I'm going to move this one here because I know this is the non-burn side and this is the non-burn side. 
So we'll flip it up. Oops. And if you're going to glue, you're going to apply the glue right around the, the collar or the rim of each of these little support things. Let me bring this up so you can really see that. So you're going to put the glue all around the sides, not on the end, right? Because that's just going to pop right through the hole of this thing. But you want it on the edges right along here. And so your next best bet is to place this guy down. Uh -huh. And you're just going to put these things in the holes like so. And again, you want to make sure that your sled on the other side is dry. And if you've just been painting on your painting surface, that there's not extra wet paint there. You might want to dry or put it like a, a paper grocery bag down or something. And then you would place these guys like so. Oops, come on, squeeze in. How am I just off? That is super weird. These things always fit. It, all right, there we go. Okay. Could be that just slightly expanded because it got a little bit wet with paint. So we flip that over. All right, so this section right here, it needs a little, a little touch of paint. Oh, no, I got white on it. Hopefully I don't mess things up. Not too bad. Okay. Oh, a little white. No biggie. It's fine. I'm just trying to get basic coverage. All right, there we go. So you can see we kind of got that section right there covered. And then I will take this guy and plop it on here, like so. And you can see like the little tops that we painted silver are showing through. And then you have a lovely assembled sled. And it holds together pretty well, but if you're planning on hanging this up outdoors on a wreath or something, you would probably be better off gluing this. If you're keeping it indoors, then you don't need to glue it. Um, okay, so if you wanted to put the word joy on this, there's a couple of options. I initially just had it up here in the trees. And again, if you, but I also had some folks at a paint party the other day, put it down here in the snow. And I thought that was a really wonderful idea. So let me grab a traceable and a thing and show you how to do that. And so if you're buying a fully assembled kit from me, you will have already got stuff pre-traced and I'll just include a little cutout of the word joy. If you're getting the kit with, with just everything DIY, you'll have the downloadables for this. So what you can do is literally cut out the joy part and place it. And so I have here carbon paper. The side is the shiny side. That's where the inky bits are. And this side is sort of the dull side. There's no inky bits there. So if I want the word joy to be right here in the snowman, I can just kind of place it and then kind of feel and, and kind of hold your hand down to make sure that, you know, you're not, you're not putting the joy right over Mr. Snowman's face, you know, and then you kind of feel the edges. So I'm a little off there. Or of course, and I'm thinking I loved, I loved, loved what some of the ladies in my last class did. I'm gonna copy them. Let's see about getting the word joy. Whoops, slippery little sucker in it, kind of right here. So now I'm also going to just feel, okay, we've got kind of some slits in the, um, in the sled, I'm trying to make sure that I'm not placing any of the, like the special swirly end bits in a, in a space that like right on the crack, that's going to mess it up. Okay. So now I've got that. So I'm literally just going to draw right over it. Yep. Yeah, okay. So there's a little curve there. No biggie. All right, and then we're gonna create that O. Whoops, right on the edge there. I think we can get away with that. Swooshy swoosh it. Yep. Okay, 
So that transferred the word joy pretty well. I think you can kind of see that. And that makes things a whole lot easier. So then you can literally just grab your gold paint or red or whatever works for you. I'm feeling red today, guys. I was totally going to go gold, but I'm thinking red is, is red is red is red is calling to me for this Whoop! project. Of course, I'm dropping bottles everywhere. So this guy is done. If you want to keep it and, you know, keep it in good condition, I would highly recommend that you rinse it out to, to use again later. Where's my water? Hello, Wendy. All right, here's one. Okay. So again, if you already got the joy on, you can stop the video. I don't think there's anything new coming up. But if you're following along, just grab a, a roundish brush, a small round brush to do the trick. Ooh, this one's yucky. All right, never mind. Let's go grab a slightly better round brush. Okay, this one just like yours. And voila. Now, if you don't have carbon paper, you can also just kind of um, scribble chalk on the back side of your um, of your paper and transfer it directly. Kind of, and you would scrib scribble the chalk in a really nice thick coat, like right over where the where the letters are. And I would also recommend that you actually cut all around this, like cut, 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 cut. So you have a small movable piece. I'm about to use this to get a design on it on, on a sled. So I'm not cutting mine up. But here we are. This is actually so much easier than trying to preserve the letters. So as you letter, you're just going to kind of continue to add paint to your brush. You're going to find you need to lift and make sure that a majority of your motions are pulling motions as opposed to pushing motions. You'll get a much cleaner, smoother, more fluid line for your lettering if you're pulling. Whoops. A few spots that are kind of breaking. So reposition either your body or your sled to make that pull a little bit more convenient. So sometimes kind of going around, I'm, I'm pushing a little bit there, but it's okay. And now I'm kind of shifting again to make it a pull. As I get to that curve, it's going to become a push again, unless I come back up here to the top and pull down to meet in the middle. Once you've got those basic lines in, you can then kind of go in and add a little thickness here and there, smooth it up. If you have paint pens, you can do paint pens. Oh, I like that joy in red. In fact, I want it kind of thicker and a little bit bolder. Now, this is going to be your personal preference, what you like. I think it's a little less busy down here. Thank goodness for paint parties with, with smart ladies, right? And if you don't want it to say joy, you could do Merry Christmas. You could do some kind of fun block letter, something. Depends on where you are with your lettering. I know I have to work very, very hard for decent lettering. I don't feel like it's my strength. keep telling myself maybe one day I'll do like a lettering lesson so I can just train myself to have to do it pretty one day yep so I'm going a lot thicker on this and that's just because I feel like I can I want to be able to like really see it 
but having gotten sort of the, oh shoot, I splooshed. See that? Now I can either choose to leave that there or I can go grab myself a, well, here, we'll dab at it first with a dry paper towel. I'm gonna go straight down and then kind of, once I get down, I'm gonna sort of pull it off. Now I need to move quickly because it's trying to dry. Got a baby wipe. Kind of scrubby scrub it up. Okay, that worked. Now this is this thing's been drying for you know several days, so that came off really easily. If the paint was still wet um, underneath, then that would have smudged things. So you're gonna have to just lift the paint best as you can and tweak it. All right. I do love that red. So again, this particular sled, he came out a little wonky, but I was literally carrying this thing around, painting it on my shoulder while I'm talking to people, handing out bottles of paint, providing coaching, painting a second sled with the other design. So you'll have to forgive my my so-so, my so-so work here, wonky face, crazy, all the things, unfinished trees. Sometimes that's just what you got when, when you're in the middle of a, of a live paint party. But again, when you sit down and take the time, you know, you saw, you probably, if you did the snowman, you saw the video of me completing it um, a little bit more meticulously, but that looks pretty cute, doesn't it? Look at that. So you lift it up. It's all assembled. It's a little bit shimmery, catches the light. And you have your joy. Let me flip it over and you can kind of see how it's all assembled underneath. I hope that was helpful. As always, love you guys. Thanks for joining, and we will see you next time for the next cool project. Bye.